the obvious and expected thing for me to do would be to show flashy creative, which I think you've already seen from Jeff Arbor today, so I didn't want to do that. Um, the Hyperfactory, we're the Hyperfactory. We are a uh, pure play mobile agency, and there's two sides to our business. Uh, the agency is really a lot more than a creative shop. It's a strategic shop, first and foremost. Uh, we're strategic thinkers about a brand, then we have planners, creatives, obviously account team, and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, I don't want to open up yet. And the other side of our business is a production shop or a technology shop. We have R&D uh, experts, and we have the production capabilities across all mobile uh, mediums. So everything from SMS to apps, iPads, and HTML5. And we have been doing this mobile thing for almost 10 years. So we obviously have a lot of knowledge. Uh, I looked at the brief and I saw that you had said there's three brands and you have $350,000 to spend amongst the three brands. And my initial question would probably have been why? Why are you gonna spend any money on any of these brands for any reason? And the first thing I would have said to you would have been taken you to where I'm gonna take you, which is actually not pitch you a campaign, even though you gave us a lot of brand information. I would much rather have taken you a little bit uh, more holistic and tried to understand where you wanna go. So at the moment, I understand you have, Mr. Strong, as you prefer to be known, no mobile strategy. Correct. And you have no mobile experience, except for some video. Yeah. Okay, so you're in the best position, because you haven't done anything wrong, but you haven't done anything right. So you can come to us and learn about what's everything that everyone has done that's wrong, and we can help you figure out what you should do right. And the biggest issue, I guess, is you've got a business, you've got multiple brands, you've got $350,000, which today isn't that much money in mobile anymore, right? If this was two years ago, that would have been a lot, and I would have probably pitched you a campaign. But today, I would say the issue you've got is a small budget, and you need to know what to do with it. You need to allocate it appropriately, and you need to understand what brand might be the best one to target, but also within that brand, how do you allocate it within the mobile space, right? We saw media, ad network, and apps just today, and that's just three out of 100 people here which could be selling you something different. So I guess the, the overall thing that I would, would be trying to sell you would be actually what the high impact strategy is that you need to buy is to get a strategy. And that's kind of uh, where I would start. If you don't have a strategy, then whatever you do today doesn't kind of set, a ground, uh, uh, set any ground rules or a vision for what you might be able to do tomorrow. If you spend 15 to 20% of that $350,000 and six weeks developing a business strategy around mobile, everything else that you do will then have an umbrella to fall under. And you'll have a filter to look through where the media is correct, whether SMS is right, whether applications are correct, or whether the mobile web is the right thing for you to do. So the first thing we would do is pitch you a strategy assignment which would be about 50,000 bucks, take a couple of months, and from then on you would know exactly where your business stands and why you should be doing what in mobile. So I wanted to spend three minutes just kind of covering what that would look like. The end goal would be that you would have some kind of a vision of where the brand should be going. You would have priority, so you knew where you were gonna spend your time and why, and you would also allocate your budget from now and also going forward uh, so that you have the maximum ROI. The first phase in which we would work with you is actually a true brand immersion. So you gave us two pages on the three brands, which to us isn't enough to understand really where your brand is and where it needs to go. The other thing we would do in the first phase is show you where all the other brands in your space are, what they're doing. So what CoverGirl is doing or what every other brand that might be in the beauty space is doing, even if they're not direct product uh, competitors, just to show you what the beauty space is up to, not only in the US but elsewhere, elsewhere in the world. Uh, the second part of the brand and business understanding is to show you the benchmarking map of the mobile industry. So we'll show you what brands we think are doing amazingly in mobile regardless of whether they're a CPG brand or not. There could be a content company like weather.com which we think has got an amazing strategic approach to mobile just so you understand what you're up against in terms of what people are looking at in terms of their vision. The second thing is we would really go into your users, understand what your consumers are for each of the different brands that you're considering. Who are they? We'd type into all the Nielsen's and understand what they're doing on mobile. We would assess what we call their mobile readiness. How ready are they to interact with your mobile? Whether it's via SMS or apps or not at all. The third thing we would do is try and figure out, can you tack all these users 
in a way that doesn't leave any of them behind. So say your Tresemme brand has a lot of iPhone, iPhone high-end users, but it's also got something in the middle of America where there's a lot of feature phone users. How can you approach these users with one strategic plan that covers them all? The third thing is then we'd get in the room and actually start coming up with a lot of ideas. This is where there's no kind of limit. We'd say, if we had all the money in the world, what is the ultimate dream for these brands on mobile? And we look at it from two points. We look at it from the consumers. If you were giving the consumers as much value as you could in their mobile experience, what would be great? What would be amazing for them to experience courtesy and thanks to uh, the uh, brands that you have? The second lens we would look at it would be from the purchase cycle approach. You want to get them into store to buy things, or you want to get them into your database, or you want to get them to be loyal, or you want to get them to sample. So what kind of approaches in that sense, what kind of ideas can we come up with that really drive that stuff home? That gives us a whole breadth of ideas to think about, which we then try and kind of narrow down and say, these are areas that we could be living within comfortably for your brand. And this is the fun part of the, you know, the process. The next step, though, is we step right back and we say, the brand still needs a vision. What is the vision on mobile? Is it to become an exciting, innovative brand that just is known and famous for creating groundbreaking work and winning all the awards and being known as a consumer uh, you know, buzz brand on mobile? Or is it a brand that is all about ROI and 100% focused on increasing a consumer database? Because those are two totally different visions. And you have to have a vision that aligns everything that you're doing in mobile. And sometimes you can have a vision that encompasses them all. But if you haven't got a big enough budget, maybe you would narrow them down. At that point, we would then kind of break it out into like strategic pillars. So you may have a vision which is then supported by four strategic pillars that you could achieve over the next few years. And those things start to then ground us in terms of what we should be doing in mobile for your brands. Once we have all those bits and pieces, we would then go about looking at all your content, your CRM plan, your social plan, your existing media plan, which you have a lot of. You, know, you have access to fashion weeks. You have access to content. Um, you probably integrate into those television shows, like you said. We then look at activation. You've got all this stuff. How would we activate it all to bring this mobile program to life? So we try and use as much of the existing assets and content that you've got and reach, and we then go, OK, what do we need to create? It may be that we need to create a mobile site. It may be that we need to create an SMS platform that enables you to do a CRM program to integrate with your program. We don't know, because we don't know your brand, and we don't know what the goals are. But this is the part where we come up with the actual implementation plan and say, these are the bits and pieces that we need. The last thing we might do is say, OK, you need to get media reach on mobile, in which case you need a media plan, in which case you may need Jump to App or Microsoft or any of those that, that may be appropriate for your audience, and we would partner with them to ensure that your reach is appropriate. The last thing, which nobody does in mobile, even still today, we would make sure that you set some goals about why you're spending this $350,000 this year on mobile. Because the last thing we want you to do is come back in a year and say you just wasted $350,000 and you don't know why. And then say you leave the job and the next person comes in and says, yeah, we did some mobile last year. That was all they had to say. So we would set goals. What are the goals? It could be as simple as we just want to set up some infrastructure. We just want to be able to opt in people with SMS. We want to be able to have a mobile site that redirectsr.com. Or it could be much more specific. We want a database of 10,000 people. Or we want to have given out 100,000 samples through mobile. We would then, depending on the goals, figure out how we're going to measure them. Because everyone can measure everything in mobile now. It really is highly measurable. So we measure things based on the goals and then implement. After we've implemented, we then look back and say, did we succeed? In which case, we would then change or optimize or rethink the whole program for the next year. Six easy steps, $50,000. You may not even have to spend the rest of 300000 You have to spend it with us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got to save some for them. Yes. Um, great. That's great, thanks. Um, I, I do, I'd be interested, um, just your, your point of view. Uh, I mean, one of the things I feel is in the interactive industry, interactive marketing, we have a tendency to overcomplicate things, whether it's overcomplicate the creative, overcomplicate just the, the big idea, or overcomplicate the measurement. And um, I think mobile has you know, been a bit protected up until now because it was such a you know, quote unquote limited space, both creatively and, and, and as far as um, consumer action. So I'm, I'm interested in your point of view as mobile devices get bigger and flashier and you know, more interactive. I mean, as you look at mobile programs and mobile campaigns, 
do you have to think about it and you have to like rein your creatives in as far as really that, that's getting too complicated? That's too geo, geo-targeted, side-loading, QR code, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's all, part of the, it's all part of when you have a vision and you understand how something fits. So at the moment, we're struggling. We're not struggling. We're dealing with the question about which of our clients deserves or needs to be on the iPad. 